everyone, welcome back. This is Amy Astro with a brand new video made just for you guys. So this video, I thought we would go back to our roots. I think it's time for us to do a Pix and Sight tutorial, don't you? And what better data to do a Pix and Sight tutorial on than the first light data from the Star Maiden herself. <laughs> The Star Maiden, I'll tell you what, she has performed beautifully. I'll tell you what, I am so happy with this data. It is so sharp and so flat. It is just really amazing data. But I will let you all decide for yourselves when you see this processing. And well, folks, it's been a long time since we've been in Pix and Sight, so let's see if we can remember how to use the program. We're going to start off with opening up PixInsight here, and I am going to open up my template project. Now I do have a previous video out there that shows you how I create a template project so you can follow along. Um, they really do save a lot of time by creating one. It just opens up all of your thumbnails so you don't have to remember what step is next. But we're going to go to Open Recent, since I've had this open recently. And when you start using project uh, template files, you'll find that it's always in your recent file. And here it is. I've got it. It's called Mono Project, but it'll work just fine for this edit. Now, today, we are going to be editing the first light of my Star Maiden telescope, which is the Altair Astro 80mm uh, Star Wave. And... I'm really looking forward to seeing this data. Now, what I have already done before I started recording is I have calibrated my image all the way down to a single stacked image. Okay, I do have other videos that show you how to go about calibrating, but if some of you would like a fresh video, I can go ahead and make that. But we're gonna start with a single image. And let's go to Open File. And let's find the image here. I've got a folder made just for you guys, and it is called my Stacked Lagoon image here. Now, isn't that a fancy image here? It is like OMG orange, and this is because I have not done automatic background extraction yet. But I'll tell you what, I'm not going to do automatic background extraction this time. I'm going to show you guys a new trick on how to get rid of this light pollution. And I think you guys are really going to like this. So I have my stacked file here, and I am going to come over here to Channel Extraction. All right, and I am going to extract the RGB of this image. Now it is a one shot color image taken with the ZWO183 color cool camera, but it can still be broken down into an RGB component. So I'm going to grab the new instance and drop it right on my file. And there we go, three images. Oops, we've got red. Let's click over here. We got green and we've got blue. I'm gonna go ahead and give them all a quick stretch. Just see what each channel looks like. All right, they all look pretty much the same. Nothing special, no color, no nothing to them. And I'm going to go to Histogram Transformation, and I'm just curious about their light curve. Which one of these is the brightest file? And I'd kind of like to bring all the other files up to that same brightness. So I'm just going to go here and go to Blue, and look at where my light curve is here. And let's compare it to Green. Is it going to move up or down? It looks like it moved up a little bit. Now Red, is it going to move up or down? it moved up even more. So I'm going to claim my red as my file that I am going to start doing my light pollution um, do away with process. Let's minimize this out of our way. And the new trick is using linear fit. Okay. And my reference image is going to be my brightest image, which is my red. 
say OK right there. And I'm going to minimize the red because I'm not going to do anything to him. Get him out of my way. And all I'm going to do is grab a new instance and drop it onto green and let it crunch and do its thing. All right, that took about 30 seconds to happen. Let's give it a brand new stretch. And that is our new image. Doesn't look much different, but it's different. Okay, you just got to take my word for that. Now let's do the same thing to our blue image and drag and drop and let it do its crunching. All right, there we go. Let's give it a new stretch. And there is our new image. So let's open these guys up. Let's get them all about the same size here. All right, so now we've got our blue, our green, and our red. And you can see they all appear to be about the same brightness factor. So what we need to do now is glue them all back together. And let's see, we're going to use the LRGB combination route, which is not part of my normal routine. So let's go to process and let's find out which pull down menu it's part of. There we go. Is it this one? Yep. Color spaces. Come down here to LRGB combination. And I don't have any luminance, but I'm going to go ahead and grab a red, which is this one. Let's find the green. And because it's got these letters in here, it already knows where it's at, which is really very helpful. Blue. I'm going to leave all of this stuff as default. And let's apply it. Oops, there we go again. That doggone square and circle, they bite me every time, but don't worry. If it didn't like the square, it will like the circle. All right, so it looks like it's done. Let's minimize this right now and push it out of our way. Let's go ahead and close these files up. We're not going to need them again, but I'll just push them off to the side for right now. Now, this is our new image that should be light pollution gone. All right, let's give it a check out and see if it actually worked. There we go. Look at that. That orange is now gone all by using linear fit, which is about the same process as if we use the background extraction or the, um, the automatic background extractor. And I kind of like the way this process does it a little bit better than using the other routes. So this is my new go-to for right now. But you know that's all subject to change as we learn new techniques. All right, so now we need to do some um, color calibration. And let's find an area of this image that has mostly background. And that's going to be incredibly hard. Because look at all of these stars in this image here. All right, there's a little spot right there. Let's grab ourselves a preview window. And let's try to grab this without any stars in it. It doesn't have to be real big. So that's going to be preview number one. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom out. And let's make another preview window of all that good stuff. There we go. And that's our good stuff. Now let's go over here to, where are you? Background neutralization. Now let's neutralize the background, but I don't think it's going to do a whole lot here because it looks pretty doggone good. And that's going to be my preview number one. Say OK. And let's run it. There we go. It looks about the same. And that process is done. And let's do a color calibration, OK? This one is the reference image is going to be the good stuff, the preview number two that we just created. I'm going to leave the structure detection on because there's an awful lot going on in this image. And let's go to the background reference, which will be a preview window number one. We'll say OK. And let's run it. And then this should be a color corrected image. Not a whole lot changed. I believe that linear fit did a jam up and jelly tight job here. I'm real pleased with that. Let's go ahead and remove all of our previews, which is preview, delete all. And let's right click here and give us a new identifier. Let's call this new stack. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and do a file save as. 
in case I ever want to come back to this part because I have something that I really just don't like about it and I want to start over. It's always good to make a little uh, save as is along the way so you can always undo something. Let's agree with that and let's close out the beginning orange mess. And let's start fresh with this brand new color corrected image. But let's deal with some noise reduction. There's not a lot of noise in this image, but it can always use just a little bit of help. So let's do a channel extraction. I want to extract the luminance channel of this image. And we'll use channel extraction, change it to the CIE, and do luminance. And say go, and it should give me a black and white image. All right, let's minimize this. Minimize. It needs some coaxing sometimes. Now let's give this a stretch and see what it looks like. All right, that looks really good. Okay, now what I do need to do is I need to permanently stretch this so I can use it as a mask. And I will do that with the screen transfer function and the histogram transfer formation. There he is, histogram transformation. Let's see, I am going to unstretch. I'm going to use this little radioactive button here, which will give it a stretch again. Grab this new instance down here on the bar, drag, click, hold, and pull it all the way over here to the histogram transformation along the bottom bar and let go. Okay, that transferred the curve over to here. Now if I reset this one and minimize, there we go. Okay, and if I say run, watch this. It is going to permanently stretch this image. There he is. Perfect. Now he is suitable for us to use as a mask. Let's do this real easy like. If you take your mouse, click, drag, hold it over here to your actual image and you see where it came up to as the double squares and let go. It is now a mask on our new stacked image. Okay? But we don't want this mask. We want to actually invert it. So I'm going to go under mask and I'm going to invert it. We want to work on the background. We don't want to work on the stars and all that stuff. Um, we're just going high level. We're going after noise. And I'm going to hit control or command K to turn it off so it's not so distracting for me. And let's go over here to, let's see, multi-scale linear transform. Let's open it up. I'm going to give it a good reset. And let's work on some of this noise, which is under this noise reduction tab. Let's make the first one at about four. I'm going to bring the amount down to half. And I could type these values in if I want. And let's run this through, let's say three times. And let's go to the second level. And we're going to drop this down to two. Take the amount down to half. And we'll run this two times. Go to level three. And let's drop this down to two. Now let's take it down to one. And we'll take this down to about half. Okay, and we'll run this through two times. And this last one, let's take this at one and half and one time, okay? We're gonna run this on the RGBK components and let's say go. And now it should be removing some of that high level noise for us. There we go, that's done. Let's minimize this guy and let's zoom in and see what did it do for us. I'm going to zoom in real far. Okay, this is after, and I'm going to hit an undo one time. And let's see before. There's before. You can see the pixelation that we've got going on around here. And let's turn it back on. And it kind of mushes it out a little bit, so it removes that noise. But it still left everything really nice. So let's zoom this guy back out. And we are going to remove this mask, and we no longer need it. It can be deleted. And that's this one right here with the L for luminance channel. And let's 
close it out. Yes. Yes, we know. All right. Sometimes it asks you things twice. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to actually stretch this image into a non-linear state. So let's turn this off. We can do this manually with using, let me show you here, reset. And let's turn on live view so we can see what's going on. Now if you're brave, and some of you guys are, I know that, you can sit here and adjust this yourself and figure out what where you would like this to be. But I'm not brave and sometimes I like things just a little bit automated. So what I'm going to do is use the screen transfer function because for the most part it does a really good job on permanently stretching. And if anything you just have a little tweaking to do afterwards. Alright, so let's hit the radioactive button and see what it thinks it should be. Not too bad. I'm going to reset this just to make sure everything's good. I want to see my... What is this guy called? He's called Newstack. There we go. And I'm going to grab a new instance and pick it up and bring it over here. I'm going to reset. That's only because he's just been doubled. Now that I know what it feels my curve should look like, I could move these around just a little bit more if I want to. But I'm actually going to leave it just like this. I kind of like it. So I'm going to say run with the square. And this is permanently stretching my image for me. All right, don't panic. It is double stretched. Turn that off. We will minimize. And we will close this preview window and here is my image nicely stretched it is now in a non-linear form I'm gonna save this so I have another place to start over with if I need to and I'm gonna call this non-linear all right and yes and let that save out for me the next thing we're going to think about is some more noise reduction, okay? So let's do another channel extraction. We're going to go back to the CIE LAB and just grab a luminance channel, new instance, drag, drop, and let the black and white image pop out for me. There we go. Now keep in mind, both of these images are nonlinear now. They have both been permanently stretched, so I don't need to stretch this one anymore. But what I do need to do is I need to make this guy pop a bit and make him a little bit more exaggerated to go after my noise. So let's go back to histogram transformation. I'm going to give it a reset. and I'm going to show you what it does. I'll show you a live preview of it. Okay. What I want to do is right here, auto clip shadows. So I will select it. And there we go. That's what I wanted to see. And click this one. There we go. That's the popping that I wanted to see. I guess I needed to make sure my layer was set up for the luminance channel. I should know that. Let's go ahead and hit apply. And since I have the live preview still on, it's going to get a double whammy right there, so don't panic. Let's turn off live preview. Minimize. And let's turn off the live preview altogether. There we go. And this is going to be our new mask. So let's hover over this tab, click, drag, and bring it over here till you get the double squares and let go. Now, if I do a control or command K, you will see the mask. But once again, I need to invert this mask. So let's go up here to mask and invert. There we go. Command K so I don't see it. And we will go back to our multi-scale linear transform. Now, if you hadn't reset it from before, half your work is already done for you. We're going to use very similar settings. I will bring this down to three. I'll leave it at half. And I'll just run it through two times. We're going to do this one just a little bit more gentle. Okay, I'm going to leave this one alone. And let's take this one and only run it through one time. And... This one, let's do a threshold of a half, and that looks good. And I'm still on the RGB component, and let's run it. 
All right, so that has run. I'm gonna minimize this again. And let's zoom in. Let's get to a dark area to compare to. All right, this is after. Let's see what it looked like before. There it goes, it's very, very subtle. I'm gonna zoom in just a couple more clicks here so you can see. Watch this area right through here. There's some pixelation going on. Let's turn it back on and it kind of mushes it out some more. But don't worry, I am zoomed in so far that mushing is not going to affect your image and it's going to look great. Now, take note, my mask is still on and I'm gonna do one more noise reduction and that is this ACDNR, okay? Now standard deviation is going to be move up to about two and everything else, let's see, oh, amount. I wanna drop this back down. Let's take it to 0.75. Now please feel free to change any of these settings. The only way you're gonna know what works for you is by sliding through them and running and undoing a few times. But this has been a pretty much what works well for me. Standard deviation of two, amount of 0.75, and let's run it. All right, folks. Now, just so you know, through the magic of editing, I am hoping that this video is gonna be condensed just a little bit shorter. But for those of you who are following me along with your own images, just for your reference, I have been processing this image now for 28 minutes. Okay, so it does take a while for everything to run in the background, but I'm hoping I can make this video just a little bit shorter for you. All right, so let's minimize the AC DNR and let's zoom in. I'm just, I just want you to see what it's doing here. Okay, let's zoom in. This is the finished one and let's do a one step undo. And it's very, very, very subtle but every little bit will help. Let's turn it back on. And if you see, you can see it just ever so slightly in here. And I don't know how the video is gonna turn out, but just know it did make somewhat, somewhat of a difference. Now there's our mask and I'm going to remove this mask. There we go. And where's that mask there? I don't need this mask anymore, so go ahead and delete it. And yes, it's going to be permanently lost. Yes, I know I broke things. It's no big deal. And here is my image right now. Now, in this point, things may have gotten a little bit brighter than you would like. So you can take a moment right now and you can readjust your black point if you like. So I just reset it and let's go find our new stack. This is what my curve looks like here, okay? And let's bring this to one and to one, just so we can see what's going on here, okay? Oops. And my mouse has a mind of its own. I'm not touching anything, I promise. But just know you can reset those when it decides to go crazy. I'm gonna turn the live view on. You don't wanna do this blindly. You wanna see what's going on here. And I'm gonna click on this black point and I'm gonna slide it up slowly I don't want to posterize this. I want it just to be a little bit darker, but you know, I can go crazy. That's a bit crazy. And that just affected the whole image. And I really did not want to do that. So be subtle with your changes. You can always come back and do a little bit more later, okay? So let's take there and let's turn off the live view. That's where I'm starting. And this is where I am right now. And I think that's that's a pretty good darkening to make me happy. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, let's turn the live view off, minimize this guy, and close my preview. And here's my image as it stands right now. And then the second half, we're gonna pick up with our range mask and do all of our, our color tweakings and make it shine. So look forward to two videos to accomplish this edit. So guys, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. I need every one of you guys. We are sitting at 11 months on YouTube, so that isn't an accomplishment itself that I've managed to pull off at least one video a week for 11 months. 
But not to mention that, we are about this close to hitting 2,000 subscribers. So my question to you guys is, is can you help me get over that hump and cross that 2,000 subscriber mark before my one year anniversary? So subscribe, please subscribe. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Don't forget to leave me comments below what you would like to see in future videos. And very importantly, like this video and share it with all of your Astro friends. And I look forward to seeing you guys in part two of this video. And until then, I'm wishing you all some very clear skies, some wonderful health, and I will see you in part two of this video. Love y'all. Bye.